Melanie was a very bubbly person. She had uh, a good spirit about her that she was always happy and she hung out with the good crowds. She was good in school. She was responsible. It's just a unique case with no crime scene because it just seems like she's vanished from the earth really. It's almost like working backwards on the case just to try and figure out exactly what happened to her. She'd be 39 this Christmas. I'm not sure. Melanie and her friends had been out and about throughout the town of New Liskard that day. It was Saturday, 28th of September, 1996, and they were just doing what normal teenagers would do, hanging out and uh, doing a bit of shopping, and her and one of her friends actually stopped into one of the local stores to buy a cake and a new cake pan for her grandmother's birthday that she was planning on uh, making the cake for the next day. 10 o'clock that night, she came over with her friends because they were supposed to be going to watch movies close to our place. She said that they couldn't go there to watch the movies, so she asked if she could watch them in her room. So I made the comment that her room was a mess. So as soon as I said, your room's a mess, like, let's go guys. And she said it with a smile. So that was the last thing I saw of her. Then they walked out. So she was in a good mood when she left the house. I walked to the sidewalk and I looked at them walk away and then I asked myself, what am I doing here? That was, I've never done that before, but I guess it was the last time I saw her and it's just weird because it's not something I would have normally done, but I was there watching them go and that's the last time I saw them, that I saw her. They ended up at one of their other friends' homes and they uh, proceeded to watch this movie. 12.30, Melanie's friend actually left prior to the movie ending because she needed to get a ride home to Halebury. She was startled when she left, is what she tells police, in that she saw a suspicious vehicle that startled her to the point where she ran. Melanie would have left uh, approximately an hour after uh, her girlfriend. Um, she was actually walked to the door by one of her other friends who saw her leave the residence and uh, start to walk uh, westward on Pine Street East. We do have a witness that says that she saw Melanie on the bridge, but police or her family have not seen or heard from Melanie since. The next morning, her alarm went on, so I got up, I went to turn it off, I noticed she wasn't there. So I thought she must have fell asleep watching the movies because she's done that before. So. I went back to bed. I think all of us, including all of the community, was just uh, not too concerned in the first few hours because we just all probably assumed that, you know, she would show up. But Melanie actually had a babysitting job um, that afternoon that um, she didn't show for. So I contacted the police and it was Chief Jelly who answered the call. At the time of Melanie's disappearance, the New Liskard Police uh, Service was actually in charge of the case. Then uh, the New, New Liskard Police Service contacted the Ontario Provincial Police uh, to request some of our assistance. We dispatched our emergency response team to widen the search perimeters. We also used the underwater search and rescue unit just to, to look in the Wabi River from the Armstrong Bridge point all the way to Lake to Miss um, and that did not uh, uh, reveal anything. What's unique about Melanie's case is the fact that we don't have a crime scene. You know, generally speaking, uh, in any investigation, we start in the center and work out. Well, we don't know where the center is. Although we do believe that she um, did come to some type of foul play that that evening. She didn't have a reason to leave the area. In addition to that, uh, New Liskard is located on the Trans-Canada Highway. There are people driving from east to west in Canada through this area. That presents um, uh, another significant uh, problem to deal with. There's been many aspects throughout those 23 years, different projects 
uh, that have occurred, uh, different targets and persons of interest. Unfortunately, uh, I, I can't reveal the, the number of tips, uh, who provided uh, tips because that they're all points of evidence and I would hate to, uh, uh, for the offender out there uh, uh, to know exactly where we're at with the case. Although maybe frustrating at times, uh, you have to look at it as from an investigator's point that at least it's productive in that um, it's moving the case a little bit forward if we do eliminate a person of interest. In this particular case, uh, all of the information has been uploaded into the major case management software uh, called PowerCase, and this is incredibly powerful. Um, uh, it allows us to uh, establish links between other cases. We've had uh, several digs actually up in our area because of specific information that we've been able to link with other information. Names, phone numbers, uh, license plates, any information could be triggered on another case which might potentially provide us with the lead that could close this file. They've always done everything that they could. They've followed leads. I just don't know what they've done to because of confidentiality, it has to stay that way. We average two to three tips, uh, whether or not it be one month, we're gonna get two or three tips uh, the next month type thing. So the public really seems to keep uh, Melanie's case in uh, our mindset anyway. But the relationships that you form with the family motivates you as a police officer. With Lisa, it, it's been good because She's been on the longest, so when I talk to her about something, I don't have to bring back the past. It's very hard after 23 years. It's like it's never ended. It's like a very long funeral. I don't feel in my heart that she's alive. It's, it's been the same thing over and over. Whenever a body is found, you wait to see if it's her. I just want it to be over. To bring resolution to the Eche family, that's why we do this. You know, I, I've always believed the most important role uh, that we have in this organization is delivery of frontline service. To be able to tell Celine that we have some type of a resolution in knowing her and getting to understand who Melanie was a little bit from her over the years, I really think that she would just like to know what happened. It's amazing what, uh, what information people have in their possession. Um, uh, sometimes they I think they believe that the police must already know, um, uh, but then for whatever reason they decide to call in the tip and it uh, allows us to move forward with this investigation. Someone out there uh, knows what happened to Melanie Eche and all it takes is one phone call. I wish that they would find it in their heart to come forward and end that silence to not go to the grave with that kind of information. I believe that it would give me peace. I would love to have a funeral for Melanie, like she deserves to be put to rest. I believe that's what she'd like and I keep on fighting for her because she's not here to do it.